you guys ready for your headliner tonight? Man, I am so honored to introduce this guy, man. I go way back with this guy when he lived in Michigan and he was touring the country. He's been seen on Comedy Central. He's been seen on America's Got Talent. He's written and produced and directed a movie called The Italy Boys. You guys are going to love him. Mr. Frank Roach, everybody. Give it up for Frank Roach and his Tigers jersey. It's not just a Tigers jersey. It's fucking Trammel, man. Last time I checked, 1984, we picked a little bit of ass. <laughs> All right, good to have you guys. Make some noise for my co-stars, please. <laughs> All right. Now, Detroit. How many people out here consider themselves partiers? <laughs> Sounds like about 30%. <laughs> How many people here have ever been so fucked up the next day you're telling your friends that a wild night you had and they're like, I was with you. <laughs> I, I think it's fun that uh, years ago they decided to try out the breathalyzer machines in Detroit. Old ass machines from California that uh, are breathalyzers where you put in four quarters, there's a cup full of straws you blow in. <laughs> Well, maybe that's going to stop people in California, but in the Midwest, it turns into a contest. <laughs> in Detroit, you got a group full of dudes going, what's the score to beat? <laughs> a group full of dudes huddled around, and always one nerdy guy trying to keep track on a napkin like it's his job. Some guy named Larry, do a point you one. <laughs> Fuck Larry. Let me get three shots of Jaeger and change for a buck. <laughs> fucking dead. <laughs> you end up driving home, your friend should stop you. I even gave out a warning shot. I guess I'm taking off. <laughs> and my friends were like, we'll see ya. <laughs> I pull out of the bar, a cop pulls behind me right away, you guys. Now he doesn't pull me over, he just follows me. Now, I don't know if you guys have been followed out of a bar for eight miles, but I'm here to tell you, bang, it'll fuck with your buzz. <laughs> You don't got a whole lot of options, you know. <laughs> Stay in your lane. <laughs> Look at the road, the mirror, road, mirror, road, the open beer bottle, fat, <laughs> the lit joint. Damn it! <laughs> so I'm pulled over eight miles down the way, and this is how he uh, starts it off when he walks up to the car. Why do I smell marijuana? You know, well, he's obviously playing dumb. And if he's playing dumb with me, he's out of his league. So I said, I didn't smell nothing to you, Aka. You know? But he said the worst thing you could hear. He goes, get out of the car. That's the worst, you know. I've had to get out of the car over a dozen times. I have never got back in the car. You know what I'm saying, Howard. So I'm on the side of the road, and a lot of guys will tell guys, you know, don't blow directly into the breathalyzer. You know, that air at the bottom of your lungs will fuck you, man, so don't do it. So I'll whistle over the top. <laughs> that does not work either, because I tried that, and that just pisses him off. Because he was like, uh, you blow until I tell you to stop blowing. Go. And I was like, you know, <laughs> And after two rounds of that, he kind of like had a mini snap. He was like, I don't think you're getting it. <laughs> and then he's like, just stand there. And him and the other officer stood off to the side and talked. I don't know what they said for the next 90 seconds. They chit chatted. I tried to listen. I couldn't hear. <laughs> Only thing I know is uh, in that time, I'm pretty sure my last shot kicked in. <laughs> uh, 
Because when he came back, I was way more agreeable. I was in a different frame of mind. I was back in the contest. So they're trying to figure out why I'm now trying to get loose on side of the road. <laughs> yeah! You know, don't do that, man. Don't celebrate. I did not win anything. The only thing I got from that night was nightmares, right? And it was uh, nightmares that didn't even match what happened. My nightmare, I'm getting pulled over, you know, buzzed up, leaving a bar, correct. But in the nightmare, I'm getting pulled over by a friendly gay motorcycle cop. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so I was like, uh, it's different, you know. <laughs> for one, a motorcycle cop uh, calls for a car to take you away when they arrest you. You know, not this guy. You know, he just scooted up on the seat. <laughs> protocol. <laughs> and he's like, you know, hold on to my waist. <laughs> and I, I was upset. I was like, what the fuck is going on here, man? And he says, you're going downtown. <laughs> and I said, you better mean the city, motherfucker. <laughs> I swear, uh, I hope there's no, you know, motorcycle cops in here. <laughs> so I don't need any trouble in Northville. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you guys, it's, uh, it's fun coming to Northville. This is a nice area in Michigan. Some areas in Michigan you'll go and you're like, oh, <laughs> when do we leave? <laughs> You know, and where I grew up, east side of Detroit, um, right by Seven Mile, near Gratiot, it's like, I knew I was in a bad neighborhood, not from the burnt down houses and getting beat up often. <laughs> no, what sold it for me was uh, our ice cream man. Because uh, he was scary, he had tattoos on his neck, and he had a, a tracheostomy operation, the hole in the throat. <laughs> And it was weird, because like the first day he stopped the truck, it was like a scary 80s movie. The wood sliding door opens. <laughs> you want us to <laughs> go? There were kids crying. I peed a little, like... How did he go to the interview? A turtleneck? What the fuck? And across the street from me was my best friend Corky, which was perfect, because when your best friend lives across the street and you're a kid, it's ideal, you know? Problem was, uh, as we grew up, Corky kind of did not. And then he was like, well, you know, I, I know you, you know, you moved out of the neighborhood and I'm still living with mom, but I want you to know, I'm, I'm selling weed now out of the house. <laughs> <laughs> you may have been there, Howard. <laughs> so, so I had to be devil's advocate because I was like, well, you're selling weed not out of the house, out of your mom's house. And I'm guessing she don't know, you know. And he's like, oh, she don't come downstairs a whole lot. <laughs> Great. What about the fact that you don't have a peephole on your and mom's door, you know? You don't have a peephole. You don't know who's on the other side because this is back when... Weed was illegal uh, everywhere in Michigan. <laughs> I know, Carl. All of my guitar keys. <laughs> hey, we're happier now, aren't we? <laughs> so he agreed, you know, about the door, you know, but he he didn't want to put in a door, you know, uh, any any kind of like different door, and he didn't want to screw a hole through it where he could put in a peephole. He was like, I'll just give everybody a secret knock. I'm like. Oh, smoking pot, who's gonna remember it now? <laughs> and then he decides animal call. And I'm like, you can't just tell people to sound like an animal. 
But he did. He went with that plan. And he's like, this is the deal. You knock, I say animal, you do the call. If you have an appointment, you will be allowed entrance. And I'm like, don't make your house sound so fucking fancy. Allowed entrance, man. Fuck. And he assigned me turkey, and I couldn't do the turkey. So I still showed up. I, there's not a whole lot of turkeys in Detroit and that, so... I went with the bird I heard a lot, you know, quail. And I figured, bird, bird family. And I showed up on that CD porch on the east side of Detroit and knocked. And I hear him through the door. Damn! I'm like, now he's disguised in his voice. I'm like, it's either you or your mom. She didn't even know you're doing this, so it's you. So I give my best turkey. And I waited for the door to open. But it didn't happen. He was in there sweating, pacing, smoking his own product, and I hear him rack a gun. Who the fuck's out there? I run off the porch. I'm not getting shot over a bag of weed. So I come back seven more times unsuccessful. And then I finally think, I gotta learn the damn turkey. So I don't know what was sadder, the time I spent on YouTube or the time those people spent uploading the videos. But I showed up and I felt ready. I was just like, damn it. <laughs> The door opens. Frank, where have you been? Get in here, man. Make it quick, though. The cops are out of me. They've been sending a quail by. <laughs> same, same guy decides he's going to get out of the drug game and get a normal job. And I'm like, there's probably going to be a normal drug test, you know? <laughs> And he's like, this factory, though, don't worry, man, it's just a pee test. And I'm like, oh, well, when is it? He goes, tomorrow. And I'm like, you're smoking now. And he goes, there's this thick-ass green shake. It's like 30 bucks, but I bought it. And you chug it 45 minutes before you have to pee. And then there's pills and there's a tea. And I'm like, well, what did you do? He goes, I got them all. I need the job, man. He did not get the job. He did get a call from the lab. Sir, according to this, you're not carbon-based. We need to see you in the lab. So I guess he did get a summer job at the lab. But. Next job, uh, factory, and he's like, oh, this is just a hair test. I'm like, that's harder than the fucking pee test, man. You know, they go back with a hair test, they go back to high school. Oh, you smoked a little pot in the 10th grade, eh? But no, he, uh, he showed up at my house on his way to that test. I almost didn't let him in, because I didn't recognize him. He's wearing a wig. <laughs> it's not just any wig. It's like this long, blonde, 80s rapper wig. And he keeps flipping it back. And I'm looking through my peephole, and all I see is... <laughs> When I let him in, I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? He goes, dude, it's real human hair, so I gotta get used to it. It's mine now. And I was like, this is fucking weird, man. So you're gonna wear that wig for now on, for life? Working at this place? And he goes, well, dude, would they come and want a snip? <laughs> they can take a little snip here and there. He goes, that's why I got a long one. I'm like, so you're gonna just rock that fucker up to a bowl cut? <laughs> and retire in 15 years from the factory on top. <laughs> well, he didn't get that far because uh, that hair tested positive for heroin. <laughs> of course it did. Who sells the real human hair? <laughs> Apparently people on heroin. <laughs> I tried to uh, cheer him up, took him to an after hours after that hair test didn't go, you know? That, that pissed him off. He started getting, you know, flyers about, you know, how to beat heroin to his house. And he was just trying to, you know, smoke pot. So I said, let's go to an after hours. And there was one, and it was years ago, at the Packard plant, downtown Detroit. And I don't know if anyone here has ever been to any parties down there, but they'll fit 5,000 people in that old plant 
and they'd bring in DJs from all over. And once we got inside, there was another line. And it was cold as hell. It was like December. And I got in line for that second line, not even knowing what it was for. I just figured if all these people are waiting, it's got to be good, right? <laughs> they were selling balloons, guys. And uh, my first thought, Detroit Public Schools, I'm like, helium, you know? <laughs> make your voice sound funny, make your friends laugh. But no, they were selling nitrous oxide, laughing gas, right? And at the dentist, when you get laughing gas, that's four or five percent. And then the rest is oxygen and nitrogen. At an after hours, it's 100% nitrous. And you're inhaling it at your own discretion from a balloon. With no oxygen or nitrogen, right? So the dude in front of me was great, because he was this big farm boy, and he's the only one who decided as soon as they handed him the balloon, he was gonna do it. So this dude took the balloon and inhaled, I don't know, half in one huff. Stiffened up. Hit the floor. <laughs> Then he started to just shake, you know? And I'm the only one concerned, you know, because I'm next. And I'm like... <laughs> Is he having a seizure, man? And they're like, no, man, he's just fishing out. And I'm like, fishing out? It happens that often, you got a name for it? <laughs> you know, because I'm next. And so then the, the dude, the farm boy, gets up off the floor, you know, he walks off, which was comforting. And then the balloon tank looks, dude looks at me and he just goes, balloon! You know, and for a split second I thought, you know, should I just walk away? You know? No. I just watched the dude fucking flop around like a fish. <laughs> should I just walk away? But then I thought, you know, I've been waiting about a half hour in this line. <laughs> paid my five bucks, right? So I took the balloon, and I took it for a walk. I was like, I'm gonna take this balloon to a spot dark enough where if I fish out, no one's gonna see. And I got to a spot where I thought it was dark enough, and I inhaled, I don't know how much, you know, all of the balloon. I had no control, I did the whole balloon. And I waited to fall. And I did not fall. It was the opposite effect. Like that balloon electrified me. I turned into Dance Master Flash. I don't even know where I learned the moves I was doing, but now a circle has formed around me. And I didn't want it to stop. In my head, I was like, dance, motherfucker, dance. And my friend, you know, Corky reaches in, grabs my arm. He's like, Frank, are you okay? And I'm like, I'm fine, man. I'm breaking it down. And he goes, no, you're not. You've just been standing there with your tongue out shaking like... I'm warning you guys about that shit. Because apparently I invented the vertical fish out. You need to have a seizure on your feet. You know, the worst part is the moves felt real to me. And that's all I can say in my defense on the ride home. Now, I gotta ask this. How many folks here have been to another country? Yeah. Right on. You know what? I figure in Northville, there's probably well-traveled people here. <laughs> you know, because the only country, you know, other than here I've been to is Canada, you know. <laughs> and I know people in Detroit aren't impressed with a Canada traveler. <laughs> we have a bridge in a tunnel, you fucker. <laughs> Not a big deal. But I'm, you know, not allowed back in Canada, so I don't even count it. You know what I mean? It's like, hey, you know what, Canada? Thank you for what you have done for us, because I feel you guys should get some credit for, you know, the sex position, you know, doggy style. I just think it, it happened in Canada so that they can both watch the hockey game, you know? <laughs> I'm just glad it caught fire. You know what I'm saying? Thank you, Canada. <laughs> <laughs>
And if we have any Canadians in here who are also motorcycle cops, I understand if I get killed after the show. <laughs> now, I, uh, I didn't get to go to Ireland, although I'm Irish, and I, I uh, got to host some folks in my family, distant family, from Ireland that came over for a funeral, and I thought it was sad because they flew from Ireland to Detroit for three days, and Detroit was America, you know, and then they flew back, and people were like, how was America? You know, because I lived in Dearborn at the time, and you know, and it wasn't, you know, I don't think they had a good time, but... The, the two of them, Two of them were younger in their 20s, and they had a shitty attitude about America, so I didn't care for either of them. They were from Belfast, and they just thought they were cooler than America, you know? And I was like, you're not. But, uh, but they, what they'd say, uh, I could understand the beginning, not the end, you know? And it would piss me off, too, but it would really piss them off. And they'd be like, uh, hey, Frankie, could you do me just one simple favor? Could you please go to the store and get me a Liberty Jimmy? <laughs> I didn't catch what you said. Yeah. It sounded like Liberty Jimmy's. <laughs> but I'm not fucking talking Liberty Jimmy. I'm talking fucking English. And it was like tempers, tempers. Like, ooh, man. I'm glad I'm a watered down American Irish, because you fuckers, you know, Liberty Jimmy's. <laughs> But, uh, well, settle down, man. But the old man was this sweet little old man, little five foot five, little guy. And I was like, and they were not nice to him either. And he was from Ireland. I'm like, you got no reason not to be nice to him, you fuckers. But they weren't. And I wanted to be nice to him. And I said, what would you like to do? You're in America. Anything you'd like to do. And he, he wanted to go to church and play bingo. You know, and I'm like, well, we can do that, man. So I, I took him to the church, you know, to play bingo, but I did not know. Uh, I mean, well, I've never been to church to play bingo. We're going to be in the basement, you know. All right, that's no big deal. Uh, and in Ireland, you can say the word fuck freely. You know, I wasn't aware of that. You know, but you cannot say the words son of a bitch. Because those words are a connotation to the Blessed Virgin Mother, and people will flip out on you in Ireland. So I didn't know that. So we're in the basement, game two. I'm playing one card, trying to figure out whether this lady who looks blind to me can play 18, but whatever. Whatever. After game two, some lady who loses like the rest of us did has to spout off, Son of a bitch! <laughs> Nobody gives a shit except him. He pops up like a little spark plug. For fuck's sake! <laughs> Will you watch your fucking language? <laughs> We're in a fucking church! <laughs> fucking children. So then I had to hustle his ass out of the church. <laughs> but at least I know when I do go to Ireland, I can say fuck freely. And you guys can too if you go. Now, now, how many people in here are into impressions? Let me hear you. Free. Well, I came for you seven people. Uh -oh. <laughs> Thank you. All right, now, I'm going to start this out. We're going to go back a couple of years. We're going to go back to, uh, we're going to go 1977. Did you say hee haw? Oh, never mind. I thought I, heard, I thought I heard you say the word hee haw, and I was like, "Are you talking about that terrible fucking show that my grandparents used to make me watch?" You said refill. Oh, refill. Who likes hee haw? Yes, See, now I pissed off my co-stars talking shit about hee haw. You hear about that later. 
<laughs> All right, now we're going to go 1977. These are the auditions you never got to see for the movie Star Wars. All right? This is uh, Jack Nicholson's audition for Darth Vader. Let me get a hell yeah. Luke, I got some bad fucking news. <laughs> As it turns out, I'm your father. <laughs> All right, try it out. I turned it off. Are you good? Is it off? Oh, yes. Yeah. You're good. Do I kill the battery? You can do it. You can do it! <laughs> for the part of Luke Skywalker. This is Jim Carrey's audition. <laughs> Got to use your imagination. <laughs> Darth Vader! Join the dark side. Start hanging out with Yoda, the little green dude. Learn how to use the force and kick your fucking ass. All right. All right, this is celebrity kindergarten. Everybody in the class is five, but they're all famous, right? So you gotta use your imagination. We got the teacher. <laughs> that some of you may have had, drank too much coffee, a little bit intense. I need everyone to put on their listening ears. <laughs> Bob Dylan, Bob, you gotta learn how to share with the other kids. <laughs> Ooh. Stay away from my crayons and my glue. Forrest Gump. Bob, I told you, I need the glue. I'm making a picture of a bird for my mama. I have to glue on the wings. Chris Rock. Good Lord, Bobby Dylan always acting like he owned the glue. For walking. <laughs> Guys, enough about the glue. <laughs> Liam Neeson, you need to relax. What I have is a particular skill set. <laughs> I can make a turkey from the bare paper carving of my hand. <laughs> The thumb, the head, the fingers, the body. Magnificent. Enough about your turkey. You can go to the corner and try to relax. And Chris Walken, you can't sell candy in my class. Whoa. <laughs> try to make a couple box for myself. The fat kid wants a Snickers bar. He's got no cash. <laughs> Who's he got to see? The candy man. <laughs> In the corner now, Candyman. I'll have us out of the corner in no time. Hey, the way out of the corner is to just turn around. That's some deep shit. All right, now, gang, I've got to find out if we have a birthday girl tonight. I know we got uh, got a couple birthdays, but is one of them a girl? 
Yep. <laughs> right here? This is you? And what's your name to you? Mona. What is it? Mona. Mona? Mona. What a beautiful name. I got stuck with Frank, so. But Frank and Mona would look awesome on the side of a camper. And people in Michigan love campers. All right, now Mona, what we are going to do, all right, you don't have to do anything, right? We're not going to ask you to even move a muscle, but I want everyone to make some noise for her. Celebrity love connection to you. So every celebrity will vie for your affections. All right. We're going to start her off with three famous bills. I need three bills from you guys. Quick. Got Cosby. it. Murray. Okay. Cosby. Cosby. All right. Guess it's not too soon. Of course, Cosby. She had the poster. All right. Here we go. We're going to start her off with Bill Murray from Caddyshack. <sighs> You know, if I was doing this day, you know, I'd take Mona back to the 18th hole. <laughs> Lay her down on a perfectly manicured lawn, we'd smoke a little bit of grass. <laughs> and drink some Caps Blue Ribbon and look at the moon till she could see us. <laughs> Gunga, Gunga Lunga. <laughs> All right. Our next bill for Mona is Clinton. I remember you from the campaign trail 88. And you didn't run. Mona, I'm sorry about her. I think her name was Trudy or something. If I was to win this, if I was to win this date, you'd find out a couple things. Mona, you'd find out my penis shoots off to the left. You can ask Trudy. Sorry, I never called. Last but not least, uh, Bill Cosby. Because I guess it's not too soon. <laughs> Don't know if I was to win the day to take your clothes off slow. <laughs> and look like a jello pudding pop. <laughs> Mona, my name is Bill. I'm probably going to slip you a pill. We'll go with a couple tough guys. We'll go uh, Stallone, Schwarzenegger, Clint Eastwood. All right. And uh, birthday girl, you can pick the year for Clint Eastwood, 78 or 79. 79. All right. Just so you guys know, it would have been the same impression. All right. Just like to have an option as a professional. All right. Starting her. We're starting her off with Stallone. Hey, I'm on. It's as far as I go on Stallone. <laughs> and if her name was Mona, I wouldn't have gone that far. <laughs> perfect. All right, uh, next up, we'll do uh, Schwarzenegger. Look at Mona, she's beautiful. If I was doing the date with Mona, I'd take her to a fancy place to eat like Janetti's. <laughs> And afterwards, we would talk. I should say Mona would talk. And talk. Until I say, Mona, yakety yak, don't talk back. But I hope she picks me. Last, out of the tough guys, we got Clint Eastwood, 1979. <sighs> Mona, I thought was to win this date. We ended up on a hardwood floor, rocking and rolling till we both got splinters in our asses. 
<laughs> Howard, you have a bad experience? <laughs> all right, let's do a couple of mafia guys, all right? We'll go Joe Pesci, uh, Chris Walken, Robert De Niro. All right, let me get a hell yeah. If I don't win this date with Mona, I fucking, I'll whack somebody. She's five foot three. She's the perfect fucking height. Are you five three? How tall are you? Way too fucking tall for Pesci. All right. Next up, we got walking. Whoa, Joe, settle down. You're talking about Mona. Northville Mona. She's a lady. You talk like that again, I'll stab you in the face. Now watch De Niro, the style, the class. That's <laughs> all I do when I'm in the face. All right. <laughs> the moan of the eyes is what got you. All right, now, one of my favorites, you guys, who's passed away. From the Midwest, who remembers Chris Farley? All right. All right, you guys want a half-ass Farley or a full Farley? Full Farley. I need a full, hell yeah. Full yeah. Woo. Mona. I know what you're thinking. I'm a little bit overweight. Maybe not exactly your. But I am 35 years old. I am divorced and I live in a van. And if they get Mona back to the van, there's going to be a whole lot of that. <laughs> All right, now guys, you are awesome, but before I get out of here, I got to ask one question. How many folks besides me think you got to stick up for your friends when they're too fucked up? <laughs> at least more people than like impressions. All right. <laughs> at least 25 people. All right, the rest of you guys are like Northville, bitch, you're on your own. Whoa! Jeez. The ones that rough a town. Got the Golden Girls in the front. Now I'm just teasing. You... Ladies just don't seem dangerous to me. It seems like a safe place. Now, hey, whoa, whoa, birthday girls. Mona, Mona, you're not too old for a spanking. And this would be the day that you'd get it. Jeez. And it would be Andy Janetti giving you a said spanking, so. All right, now gang, my point is, I was at a party, I took a friend, nerdy but nice. And I, I think you do stick up for your friends when they're too messed up. Because they wanted, he, he passed out on a random couch on the east side of Detroit before 11. They wanted to shave off his eyebrows. He's got four kids, man. He's got a family. He sells insurance. And that's what I said. I said, he sells insurance! Because it was a mob to take them eyebrows. I'm like, you gotta back the fuck off, man! He's got four kids! And then the one guy's like, settle down, man. We're just gonna write on him with the marker, you know? And uh, my friend woke up at four, saw his face in the mirror, and flipped out. You know, he's like, you guys drew a bunch of dicks on my face. <laughs> it's like, we didn't draw them, we traced them. <laughs> I'm Frank Roach, you guys were great. Frank Roach, everybody, come on.